it's that time. We have the picks for Team Europe. This has just come out. This is absolutely breaking news. Let's go through exactly who Luke Donald has picked as his captain picks for 2023. And I'm going to say right now, um, I'm surprised at one or two of these. But as we go through this, guys, as I always say this, let me know what you think of these picks. Get down in the comments. And obviously, if you are enjoying this video at any point, do consider subscribing and hitting that thumbs up button. So let's first go through the automatic qualifiers. In no particular order, these are Tyrrell Hatton, Victor Hovland, Rory McIlroy, John Ram, Matt Fitzpatrick, and Robert McIntyre. And those two golfers were confirmed yesterday. Matt Fitzpatrick having a great finish on the mountain. Yes, he didn't get the job done, but a great finish on the mountain nevertheless. Okay, it's that time. And as I say, we're going to go through exactly who these picks are, but I'm a little surprised at some of them. So pick number one is Tommy Fleetwood. Now, although Tommy hasn't won this year, this will be his third consecutive Ryder Cup. We can't forget any of the Mollywood. We can't forget how he is on and off the golf course. And I actually see him as one of those players now, which some of the rookies in this squad, the likes of maybe Robert McIntyre and a few of the picks, will look up to. I also think his game is absolutely perfect for Europe on the Marco Simone course. He's won at Wentworth, and the Marco Simone course sort of gives me those Wentworth-style vibes. And... I think he is a great, solid pick. Now, next on our list, and the second one of Luke Donald's picks is Seb Stracker. Now, this is a strange one for me, not because of form. Like, he's 23rd in the world, he's had two PGA Tour wins. This season, he's played 28 events, made 20 cuts, five top tens, three second places, and he won the John Deere Classic. So, the, his resume is absolutely perfect. He's a man in form. He's a man at the top of his game right now. But the questions that I have with this is, we used to see people in the past play a lot of events in Europe in order to be considered to play in the Ryder Cup. Like, I remember when Paul Casey sort of was touch and go and maybe missed out once or twice because he played a lot more on the PGA Tour than he did in Europe. Now, this is crazy. Seb Schracker has not played a European Tour only event, so one that's not either co-sanctioned or a major, since June the 10th, 2018. Now, I find that really, really strange. Like, if you're looking for somebody to compete on a golf course, a European-style golf course, I feel that's strange. Maybe the form outweighs any of this, but there's one guy that has missed out that I feel could have been in that slot. Now... Take nothing away. Seb Shaka is an awesome player, and I'm sure he will play his part. And he is one of the rookies, one of the rookies this year in the Ryder Cup. Okay, going on to the next pick. This is Justin Rose. Now, when you think of Justin Rose, you think of a wealth of experience. And how I'd sort of say his season has gone is sort of like a, a steady one. Like, steadily performing better, steadily getting better. It's going to be his sixth Ryder Cup. And one thing I would say is, like, his record is 13-8-2. So he's won 13 times, lost eight, and drawn two. Now, last time he didn't play in the Ryder Cup in 2021, they were absolutely thrashed 99 at whistling straight. So um, I think what we look at here is a Justin Rose that's going to be a what we're going to cast as, I don't, I'm not, I'm calling him a veteran, but a guy that's going to be there that younger players can really lean on. And maybe even a matchup that younger players are going to be put with to sort of offer that confidence, offer that experience and offer that wealth of knowledge of, you know what, how do you perform in a team? Like all these top golfers are just literally wired in their head to play individually. But Justin Rose, yes, a strange one. I don't feel like he's in exceptional form, steady year, but I think it offers that balance in this team of sort of wealth of experience and youth. Okay, so let's get into our next pick. This is pick number four, and it's Shane Lowry. Now, Rack has just mentioned he was part of that 2021 whistling straight absolute thrashing, so he'll be keen to turn that around this year. Now, his year this year looks steady. He finished 12th at Oak Hill in the PGA Championship. He's also finished tied 16th at the Masters, tied 5th at the Honda, and tied 14th at the Genesis. 
and what I'd class as a very, very steady year. And I think he is a player that you're going to look at as being as part of quite a few more Ryder Cups. Like, great short game, great off the tee, great competitor. Like, those fist pumps, even though they lost, like, his passion is infectious. So, a great pick all round. Okay, so let's get into these last two picks. We've so far had Shane Lowry, Justin Rose, Seb Stracker, Tommy Fleetwood. So the final two picks, and this one is Nikolai Hoygaard. Now, I'm going to say this is an unbelievable pick. Arguably one of the best golfers in the world, and one of the, arguably the best golfers in a lot of form right now. He won in 2021 on the Marco Simone golf course, finished tied 14th at the Wyndham, and then on his return to Europe, he finished tied third in the Czech Masters. So definitely a player in a lot of form right now and a golfer that is going to be set for the future. Now again, Nikolai Hoygaard is going to be a rookie as part of this squad. I'm excited to see him perform. I'm excited. I had him as one of my sort of leak picks and I think he's going to be awesome for the team. Now, there's a guy now we're going to talk about and this is unreal. But I'm going to offer who I think potentially should have been picked ahead of maybe Seb Stracker, maybe Rose, or maybe even Ludwig Agard. All right, so let's go through this. Pick number six, and this is crazy, Ludwig Aberg. All right, he is a rookie. Now, his record is unbelievable. We all saw his win on the mountain at Kronz Montana. He beat Matt Fitzpatrick, a run of four straight birdies, an unbelievable performance. But listen to this. So in the last two months, he only turned pro in June. He has posted four top 25s on the PGA Tour. He then went over to Europe, finished tied fourth in the Czech Masters. He chased down Matt Fitzpatrick on Switzerland on Sunday, as I just said. And this has got him his pick for the Ryder Cup. I think. How he finished, as well as his bit beforehand and his consistent performances since turning pro, he has had an unbelievable two months. Now, this is crazy. Listen to this stat. He's the only ever Ryder Cupper that has never, ever played in a major championship. Now, the only thing that I would say is this. He turned pro in June. It's only a short space of time since he turned pro. Is it too soon? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Is it too soon? So that wraps up our entire team here for 2023. So the automatic picks were Tyrrell Hatton, Victor Hovland, Rory McIlroy, John Ram, Matt Fitzpatrick, and Robert McIntyre. We then had Tommy Fleetwood, Seb Stracker, Justin Rose, Shane Lowry, Nikolai Hoygaard, and Ludwig Aberg. Now the question is, should of Adrian Moronk been picked? He won at the Marco Simone this year. Now, what better part of your resume to actually win on the golf course that they're playing the Ryder Cup? I feel like he would be feeling right now that he's been very, very hard done to. Definitely Ludwig Aberg pipped him to that spot on his performance on the mountain. And I think Luke Donald's just turned around and gone, you know what? Since you turned pro in June, that is seriously impressive. And you've got a seriously bright future. But I question that again. Maybe it's a little bit too soon. But arguably, that's why you've got the likes of Tommy Fleetwood in there. That's why they've got the likes of Shane Lowry and Justin Rose to offer that balance. And don't forget, we've got Rory and John Ram in there too to also, also offer that wealth of experience. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on today's breaking news story. There you have it. The six captain picks for the Ryder Cup squad Team Europe 2023. And I'm going to say it right now. I am now extremely excited. Team Europe looks strong.